Things that look good on paper do not always work out so well. Just ask Karl Marx. A social theorist in the 1800s, Marx analyzed the progression of economic systems from pre-communist slave societies through feudalism, capitalism, and eventually back to a capital-sharing communism. Economic class conflict was the driver of this change, an alienation of the producer to the means of production increasing until communism is finally reached. In conversations with a person on the street about Marx, the person might tell me about communism rather than this alienation. Marx believed that alienation was a mechanism of social and economic control in a capitalist society. As the ideas of capitalism advanced in the 20th century and the socialist nations such as the Soviet Union and East Germany collapsed, neoliberalism emerged as the dominant economic model. Neoliberalism is a political philosophy of free markets and less government control. It replaced Adam Smith's liberalism theory of the global market's invisible hands governing efficiently. Neoliberalism theory assumes that supply and demand levels will efficiently regulate commodity prices with no or little government intervention. If large corporations had consciousness, this could potentially work. However, the fact that they do not results in inexpensive imports being spread to the planet's far reaches. Small farmers' prices cannot compete with such global supply. Daniela lives in Copacabana, Bolivia, on the shores of Lake Titicaca. She lives with her family and struggles every day to obtain food. Her mother makes textiles to sell at the local market, while her father works for poverty wages in the quinoa fields. Daniela's father does not receive fair prices for his crop in Bolivia's agricultural markets. The poverty of Daniela and her family is common among many small farmers throughout Bolivia and Latin America. Monsanto, a U.S.-based biotechnology company, and other biotechnology companies force families like Daniela's to decide between growing crops using biotechnology or growing crops sustainably in hopes of getting it to a sustainably certified trade network. Biotechnology, on the other hand, is a set of practices that alter the genetic makeup of a plant or animal species in order to increase efficiency, such as the production of cereal and rice grains that produce their own fertilizer and their own pesticides. Though biotechnology may increase yield, it creates a vertical industry in which the seed manufacturer owns the entire production process from seed to seller's market. Biotechnology also demands annual seed purchasing because the seeds are genetically modified not to reproduce annually. Another problem is that genetically modified plants share genetic information with wild or organic species. Dennis Normal, the Japan correspondent for Science Magazine, believed that DNA transfer through biotechnology will harm biodiversity and environments in the long term. Sustainably certified agriculture offers a way out of this high-stakes gamble that could result in long-term genetic alteration of immeasurable ecosystems both far and near, as there is no substantial method of genetic containment within the modified species. Sustainably certified crops come in two types, certified organic and fair trade. Certified organic and fair traders offer higher prices per unit than without certification. Certified organic and fair trade are more environmentally sound alternatives than genetic modification and provide a means for consumers in the affluent north to shorten their food network as they learn both cultural traditions and economic realities of the global south. The Organic Crop Improvement Association, or the OCIA, a U.S.-based nonprofit organization whose goal is to improve crop quality and sustainability, has determined that a crop to become certified organic must be cultivated on a field free of pesticides, herbicides, or synthetic fertilizers for three consecutive growing seasons. Fair trade certification means that the farmer meets the designated standards of crop production and then sells that certified product to an exclusive network of buyers in a specified regional market of their nation that pays the farmer a fair price for growing the crop. Oftentimes, this is only in prominent urban areas or more developed rural centers, making access to such networks difficult. Daniela and her family grow quinoa and wish to be members of a fair trade network such as El Ceibo in northeast Bolivia. 
It may be true that the process of globalization is unstoppable, but it does not have to be a negative process. It may be a useful tool to promote such fair trade markets. Fair trade markets promote living wages for farmers and improve financial and nutritional security for farmers and their families across Bolivia and other developing nations. As members of a fair trade network, Daniela's family will be able to grow organic crops, receive higher crop prices, and protect the environment through doing it sustainably. Fair trade networks do have a number of problems. The geography of Bolivia and other Latin American nations makes travel difficult to participate in such networks. Knowledge of sustainably certified markets is difficult to obtain for Daniela's family and other Bolivian farm families. Some consumers in the United States and other affluent nations are reluctant or simply unable to support a social safety network such as fair trade. A pound of fair trade coffee from Bolivia, for example, costs substantially more than a pound of traditionally grown coffee elsewhere. Fortunately, in 2009, consumers around the world are consuming more fair trade products and supporting more fair trade systems than ever before. As supply follows this increasing demand, U.S. consumer prices will fall as well. New liberal theory tells us about the benefits of free trade and the end of import tariffs on a nation's incoming goods. Free trade is free to the affluent westernized nations, but free trade is also associated with poverty and environmental destruction throughout many developing nations. In order to compete with the low commodity prices associated with neoliberalism, farmers choose to either increase yield through biotechnology or to seek out these sustainably certified trade networks. Fair trade is fair to those who seek to enhance the livelihoods of Daniela's family, Daniela's family, as well as many other families in Bolivia and elsewhere that are in the same situation. Free trade and biotechnology that cause destructive genetic alterations should be replaced by trade justice and quality foods produced pesticide-free for living wages. Environmentally conscious consumers are connected to the alienation that Karl Marx discussed a century ago. Educated consumers understand the disparity between prices paid for products in the United States and the economic hardships of farm families in developing nations. Daniela's family is currently excluded from a fair trade network for their quinoa. Understanding and expanding the fair trade system can address such economic situations around the globe. Environmentally and socially sound consumerism through the purchase of fair trade products and through the support of additional fair trade networks promotes human equality. Daniela's future is tied to a healthy environment, fair crop prices, and consumers willing to pay premium prices for organically grown foods. Human progress includes all of these things, which in turn promotes the equality of all living things, our environment included.